If you've ever wondered why you should learn Greek, or perhaps you've learned a little bit of Greek and you're wondering if you should keep going, I want to encourage you that Greek is well worth the effort. In this video, we're going to look at six reasons why Greek is worth the effort and hard work that it takes. Hi, I'm Daryl Burling from Master New Testament Greek. I help people like you with the tools, habits, and systems to master the Greek of the New Testament. I encourage you, if, if you find my material helpful at all, go ahead, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and also give this video a thumbs up as well. I'm going to give you in this video six different reasons. That's six, six reasons why reading the original language is worthwhile. Because we've all felt at some point, if you're learning Greek, at some point, and particularly probably in the first few weeks of learning Greek, you've always wondered, is this really worth the effort? But a couple of things are worth knowing, even before we get to these six reasons, that if you're going through the beginning Greek stage, you're actually in the hardest phase of learning to read Biblical Greek. It gets easier, and you just won't struggle to the same extent that you probably feel you are right now at this stage. So if you get through the first little bit, you'll probably be fine but you just need to get through that first piece first. That's the hardest piece. Okay, so let's put that aside. Let's go back to the six reasons to consider learning to read the Greek of the New Testament. So let's go through them. The first one is simply to engage more deeply with the text. To engage more deeply with the text. One of the big challenges when you first start learning Biblical Greek is it just seems so slow. How can it take so long to read a verse it just seems ridiculous but what's going on there even though you're slow you're actually engaging with the text in a deeper way so rather than thinking of that as a as a hindrance or as something that's going to hold you back or as something that is frustrating delight in the fact that you're now thinking through the language of the original writers you're now trying to grapple with the meaning that the original language embeds for itself not only is this going to force you to read slowly, it's also going to require or give you the opportunity to meditate more deeply on what you're reading. And this meditation has great benefit for your soul. You're going to think more carefully about what the author is saying. And as you think more carefully about what he's saying, you mean that means you're going to have to think about the impact and the ramifications of that and how that might apply. So just working with the original language itself provides you with an opportunity to engage more deeply with the text, which is going to have benefits in and of itself just by merit of the fact that you're working slowly and deliberately to understand what the author was originally actually saying. In fact, the more deeply we can engage with the original languages and the text of the New Testament in the original language, the greater the potential that the Holy Spirit has to work in us. So this is a fantastic reason to read the New Testament in the original language, to engage more deeply with the Word of God. The second reason is for clarity clarity. Not only do we engage more deeply in the Word of God, but we also get more clarity by working with the original language. The more deeply we engage with the text of the New Testament in the original language, the more clarity we will gain about exactly what the author was saying and the reasons why he was saying it the way he was saying it. One of the things that's really important when it comes to translation, Bible translation generally, but also just understanding is detail. Detail is critical and detail is one of those things that you just cannot bring through in a translation. The nuances and the detail of an original of the original language just cannot be meat beaten. In fact, if you think about Bible translations, English Bible translations, if you have a, a dynamic equivalent kind of translation, dynamic equivalent translations often lend themselves, shall we say, to being over-translated. That's not to say that they're bad. I'm not saying that any Bible translation is good or bad. Bible translations are what they are. You can't get a perfect Bible translation. But there are different pros and cons of different types of translations. For dynamic equivalent translations, they often tend to become interpretive because they can't convey the detail of meaning. And so to get something clear out, they will interpret. They will give an interpreted meaning rather than conveying the meaning of the original languages. Secondly, if you try to go to a literal translation, you're often going to find that literal translations can't provide the nuance or the implications that you would get from the original language directly. You just can't translate some things into English until you'll often find that when you learn Greek for the first time, you start to see that there are things there that you just can't translate. There are nuances you just can't bring into English. So translations just cannot bring out the clarity that is possible from knowing the original language. It's just not possible. Now, that doesn't mean to say that Bible translation is, is bad or Bible translations are wrong or anything like that. No, we need those. That's not to say those things at all. 
But what I'm saying here is that if you want more clarity, if you want more understanding, then you can't go past the original languages. Those are critical for helping you to understand what the original authors were saying. Someone once said that reading in a translation is like kissing your bride in a, through the veil. So you're on your wedding day and you, you're about to kiss your bride and you she doesn't lift her veil and she's got this gossamer over her face and you're kissing her through that. It's just not the same. I'm not even going to go into that in any more detail. The point is that there is nothing as clear as understanding the author's own thoughts in their own language. Okay, and that's the point here that I'm trying to get at. So you might be saying that I see that I can get greater engagement with the text by reading it in the original language. I see that I can get greater clarity, but there are so many good tools. There are so many good commentaries around now that why would I need to go back to these other to the original language when I can just go back to these tools and I can depend on these other things. Well, this is actually another reason why working with the original languages can be so helpful. You're going to be less dependent on those tools. You don't have to go to those tools as much. Here's what Scott Haifman, a New Testament scholar, said about this very issue. He said, it's precisely because there are so many excellent commentaries available today that the use of the biblical languages and preachings becomes much more important, not less. Given the many commentaries and Bible resources available today, not to use the languages in our preaching will either cost us too much time and cause frustration in the end, redefine our role as pastors altogether, or deny the very Bible we are purporting to preach. Benjamin Merkel says something similar. He says, more translations and commentaries may make our library look well-stocked, but they do not ensure that our interpretation of the Bible will be correct. Our point is not to out-translate the translator or out-comment the commentaries, but to see for ourselves how exegetical decisions are made by others and why. It's not just about knowing the original language. It's about knowing the Word of God in its original language. And when we do that, it gives us this clarity. So when you do come to use tools, you're asking different questions and you're going to use different tools and you're going to benefit from those tools in a whole different way. And that's going to also have other implications, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. The next benefit then is confidence. Greater clarity in the text provides greater understanding of what the text is saying, which means not only independence, but also confidence. In fact, this is actually one of the reasons why you're now more independent of tools, because now you have confidence in what the text is saying, so that you don't have to go to those tools to figure out what it's saying. You know, you can go back to those, but you're not dependent on those. You're seeing it for yourself, and then you're weighing the ideas of others based on what you've already seen. This leads to greater confidence. So now, when you look at these texts, you have the confidence because you've read it for yourself. This actually has some significance in church history. In fact, if you go back to the Reformation era, it was confidence in what the text was saying that ultimately led to the Reformation. Philip Melanchthon, he said that we must learn these languages unless we want to be silent persons as theologians. Now, what Melanchthon says is actually really significant when it comes to the Reformers themselves. Luther. Luther was reading and teaching Biblical Greek in a university, and it was th that knowledge of the original languages that gave him the confidence of what he was reading in the New Testament was true. And it was that confidence that then allowed him at the Diet of Worms to be able to stand before the emperor and to be able to declare to them, unless I am convicted by scripture and plain reason, I do not accept the authority of popes and councils, for they have contradicted each other. My conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and I will not recant anything, for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. God help me. You see, it was Luther's knowledge of the scriptures in the original languages that gave him this confidence before the emperor he probably would not have spearheaded or began or initiated the Reformation if he had not understood the original languages. This really brings into light what Melanchthon was said. If we do not learn these languages, we will be silent persons. If Luther had only taken the word of scholars, he would not have stood up against the, the church of his day and started what we now refer to as the Reformation. So confidence comes out of knowing the original languages. 
Not only this, but this clarity and this independence of tools and this confidence actually gives us greater efficiency, far greater efficiency. Because we're not looking all the words up, because we're not dependent on tools for passing, because we're not looking up commentaries to see what somebody thought this word meant or how this word was or whatever it was, we get far greater efficiency. In fact, Scott Haifman, uh, who I mentioned earlier, he said one hour in the text in the original languages is worth more than 10 in secondary literature. One of the things that you get is as we understand the text in the original languages, we know where to focus our attention. If we're teaching this text, we know how to what parts of the text are significant, where the author is placing his focus and his attention. And therefore, that means we can just go there and focus on that rather than being sidetracked by rabbits rabbit trails and things like that. This means that we are going to reduce our, because we have reduced dependence on passing tools, lexical works and commentaries, we're just going to be far more efficient. So let me give you the first five again. We get to engage more deeply with the text. We get more clarity. We get independence from tools. We get greater confidence and we get efficiency. But there's one more that's very important. And again, this stands in behind Luther and many others throughout church history who have known the original languages as well. And that is spiritual vitality. See, the Word of God is living and active. And it is the tool, it is the sword of the Spirit used by the Spirit of God to change the soul, the hearts of those who read it. It is the Spirit of God who is going to use the Word of God to cut away ideas and, and worldview elements and thoughts and desires that are just not corresponding to what honors the Lord, to the character of Christ, to God's creation. And so it changes us. And therefore, the understanding we get from the original languages is going to transform us. This is going to make us more spiritually alive than simply by engaging with a translation. Careful and detailed engagement with the Word of God in the original language will humble us. It will challenge us. It will teach us and it's going to help us to understand what he wants of us. And here's the thing. Understanding is a predicate for obedience. Obedience leads to wisdom. Wisdom is to be more sought after than precious jewels, according to the scriptures. So by understanding and then obeying, we grow in wisdom and then we have that which is truly valuable which is that life and that vitality. Not only as we see the goodness of God's plan, but as we rejoice in it, as we thank Him for it, and as we are transformed by it. And that's what it's really about. So, six reasons to be, to be engaging in the original language, to engage deeply with the text, to get clarity, to be independent from tools, to get confidence, to have efficiency in our study, and finally, to have that spiritual vitality that only comes from the original languages. Yes, reading the Greek is more demanding, but it's also more rewarding. Reading Greek is not for everybody. Now, I'm not saying that everybody should go out and read Greek. That's not the case. But for those of us who are teaching Greek regularly, for those of us who have responsibility in our church, our church, Christ, and the ministry that we have will be better served by us if we understand the original languages. Not only that, but if we want to make a bigger impact in the world for the Lord, there's no better way to do that than to engage in the original languages deeply and richly. And so that is what I want to encourage you to do. So if this has been uh, encouraging to you or in confidence building or just sort of gotten you out of a rut or whatever it is, I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button, hit the notify bell, and then hit the thumbs up button to, to encourage others that this is a helpful video. And again, if this has been helpful, go ahead and share it with somebody and that will be a blessing as well. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you then.